Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 2022 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. How will Pisces be affected by the January 2022 full moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. 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 At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the strength card, which is Leo energy, and we have the high priestess coming through. And I love this combination right here for us. There's really strength in the wisdom that is coming our way, in the insight that is guiding us forward. It brings us to the tower in our inner selves, and then the ten of cups. So it's after everything has fallen apart. Something has pushed things to fall apart, to come to a certain breaking point, breakthrough, an understanding, but it comes through some sort of, of chaos, some sort of, it's not necessarily trauma, but it can definitely present itself that way within our lives. And it moves us to the 10 of cups. It moves us to a place of realizing what happiness means for us. It's kind of like, if I didn't go through this, I wouldn't know what truly makes me happy, what I truly desire, what I truly want, what I truly need. It brings us to the strength card once again in our in our emotional self and then the ten of pentacles so not only are we coming to a completion of a cycle in our emotional self but we're also coming to the completion of a cycle in our prosperity in our understanding of money there's some way that we're moving forward which is completely out of the the realm of what we thought we would be doing so that's going to be quite beautiful then we have the king of wands which is fire sign energy aries leo sagittarius if we have fire sign energy within our natal chart that's coming through quite strongly here in our public arena self but also the fire sign energy of leo that's at our heart and at our root again coming through very strongly leo is coming through very strongly at our heart and our root so if we have that within our chart be mindful that this is going to come out as a very powerful force of our personalities during this time we're also bringing that into the public arena into the way that we're going after our lives and we have the five of pentacles which is being held out in the cold which is 
is feeling like no matter how hard I try, no matter what I do, I will never get to that place of prosperity that I want. It's the poverty mentality. Now we can have wealth coming into our lives and yet we could have been through that tower time of hurt, of pain, of chaos around money, around prosperity, around wealth, around what we desire for our lives and for ourselves. And we have a hard time seeing that maybe this chapter is closed. And, you know, we say maybe because there's always that fear in the back of our heads. What if I lose it all? What if everything falls apart? What if I can't? And Spirit's saying here, what if you can? What if you can? I mean, that's a very powerful place to be right now. What if you can? So let us look at the chakra energy, not the chakra energy, the energy that we need to be mindful of during this time. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. It is the chariot. Now, that's very interesting. So this full moon on the 17th of January is the Cancer full moon. And so the chariot energy is telling us, be very mindful of the intensity of this moon. And the moons are always intense for us. We're represented by the moon in the in the ma major arcana. So the moon has more of an effect on us than it does for others. We feel... It's also the fact that we feel the changing faces of the moon, the changing faces of our lives and ourselves much more profoundly. Cancer is also ruled by the moon. So it's a very powerful energy and it's an energy that it feels very home in. Let us look at the chakra energy. This is soul's healing, and this is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. This is a sense of I am embracing healing. I am having this healing energy kind of rain down on me, be able to move me forward, be able to open up the doors for me. I'm starting to heal. I'm starting to see. I'm starting to understand me better because of this. So let us talk about this full moon. On the 17th of January, we have the full moon in Cancer. It is the wolf moon, so it's showing us what we hunger for. As the story of the full moon always begins, the moon is opposite the sun, and the full moon always has our home, our family, our relationships come into focus, as well as the opposite forces within our lives. This is a time when we seek to balance our needs, we seek to balance, and we need to listen. Okay, so we're going to seek for balance, but we need to listen to the inner voice within us, to what spirit is guiding us to. This is going to be a time where we really think, I got the answers. Don't worry about it. Like, I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm supposed to be. And spirit's saying here, you need to stop and listen. You need to not take the reins as much, but see, see where this leads you. See where I'm taking you. Because with the full moon in Cancer, it says a personal issue reaches resolution. A conclusion is going to be coming. We just have to make sure that we are open to what is being said, what is being shown, how we are moving forward. Now, the full moon is going to be opposite Pluto. This aspect will see our emotions absolutely intensified. We will be feeling more vulnerable because of mood swings, because of fears, because of jealousies, and simply because we're more plugged in to the emotional world and to our own emotions. Some of us will find this absolutely exhausting. Some of us will really like this. We'd like to be connected. And remember, this doesn't just last for the 17th of January. It lasts for the two weeks after. And so this is going to be a time where we feel much more than we might even be used to feeling. And so we have to be mindful of this energy. We have to be mindful of what we love and what we want within our lives and see ourselves with much more openness, much more compassion and see those around us the same exact way. For those of us working on empathic or psychic development, this is the perfect time to connect. This is the perfect time to see where this energy will take us, where this connection takes us, but also to know that if we're empathic, we've been this way our whole entire lives. Also to know that I need to take time to step into myself and not lose myself into everybody else's emotions. If we're looking for psychic development, the sense of really letting our intuition, our greater understanding guide us. We've also had that our, our whole entire life. How are we embracing this? How are we embracing us? How are we seeing and understanding where it is that we need to be soul, spirit, and self? Now, the moon is going to be conjunct the fixed star Pokiron. Pokiron is very interesting because it's of the nature of Mars and of Mercury, which can make us stubborn and judgy and hasty, and it's not the best, but it's not the worst. But what it does have the element of is making us violent and forceful. 
Now, the violence doesn't have to, you know, bring itself forward in, in physical violence, in, fift, in fisticuffs, you know, as they said back in the day. But what it does bring is this sense of anger and this sense of vengefulness and the sense of I can have violence and it doesn't have to be physical violence. It could be emotional violence. It could be spiritual violence. But I'm going to think that through this force, I will be able to get what I want and I'll be able to get to where I want. So we have to be very mindful of that energy coming in and moving us in directions that we just don't want to be. We have strength here at our root. And I love this card. I love the fact here that she's walking with a lion. So this really makes me think of the story of Thecla in Gnostic texts, in, you know, Eastern, Eastern Orthodoxy, Eastern Christianity. There is the sense of with, with Thecla, she was sacrificed, right? She was, she was captured. She was in, she was proclamizing with Paul. And every time they would go to a city, the, the authorities would be called and she would be taken away. Paul would disappear. It doesn't make him look too good, but he would disappear and she'd be taken away. And in one of the, the circumstances, she was taken away and she was going to be fed to the lions. But what happened is all the female lionesses came around her and kept the male lions from eating her. And so the whole crowd that was there to see a good time, you know, person get eating, said, no, let her go. And that is what happened to her time and time again. She was supposed to be fed to sharks. She wound up, you know, baptizing herself in the water. This is a very strong imagery that comes forward because it's like, this is the strength that I am embracing as I walk forward by something that was supposed to eat me, something that was supposed to be terrifying to me, something that was completely overwhelming. And now I'm seeing myself embrace who I am, what I want, and how I move forward in love and compassion. Because remember, that lion can turn around and eat that woman in an instant, absolute instant. But here, there is respect, there is love, there is compassion, and there is coming together. And that's what we need to embrace. It moves us to this energy here. And even his face with her hand, you know, just resting on his forehead, is just so content. It's like, I'm so content because I am loved. And it's opening up our hearts, Pisces, which is something that we can do easily as a water sign energy, but also something that is very overwhelming for us at times because of the emotions that we get back, because of the intensity that we get back. It moves us to the high priestess. We're going to be seeing things as they are, not simply as they're presented. So this is going to be, we're seeing behind the mask. And as we're seeing behind the mask, we're seeing behind the mask of ourselves. We're seeing behind the mask of the people around us. It's like, this is who you truly are. This is what you truly want. This is what you truly need within your life. And as we're doing this, as we're finding this, as we're understanding this, we're finding ourselves more and more. We're finding what we need. We're finding what we want. We're finding what we desire because it's almost like, I can't let you turn away. And this can be with people, this could be with work, but this could also be with our physical health. This could be with our physical well-being, our mental well-being. This is going to be a time where it's like, no, I'm not taking the nonsense anymore or I'm not lying to myself anymore. This is what I need. This is me showing up for me. And it brings us to the tower. It brings us to our inner selves, looking at how we've been thrown out of our comfort zone. It's not even having to have things fall apart. But for some of us, it has been. It's been 16 years of struggle or it's been, you know, 16 years, 16 months, 16 weeks, 16 days. It, it doesn't matter how it manifests. It could be from the time we were 16, where all of a sudden we started to feel different. Like we, we needed to find where we fit within the world. And we were always pushed out of our comfort zone, pushed out of where we thought, okay, I'd finally find where I belong, or this is my footing. Now we're starting to need to find our voice. And as we're seeing the world differently during this moon and during this two weeks after this moon, it's like, not only am I seeing this differently, but I'm starting to see me. And I'm looking at this tower time. I'm looking at this intensity. I'm looking at this power. I'm looking at all of this. And I'm beginning to say, oh, how do I need to move forward? Like, where do I need to be? Is that why that happened? Clarity is coming. Because the Ten of Cups brings healing. It brings love. It brings connection. The Ten of Cups is, and they all live happily ever after. But here's the kicker. My happiness and your happiness can look very different from one another. And yet we'll still define it under the word of happy. So this is going to be a time for us where we become open and honest with what we love, with what we want, with happiness, with joy, with what we need from our lives and for ourselves. And this is raising us to a different sphere of being. And as we're doing this, because we're starting to be in the present, we're starting to understand the now, we're taking away the struggle of the future and the chaos of the past. And we're saying, how do I walk forward in this day? And it brings us again to strength of heart. It brings us to our emotional strength. It brings us to what we love and what we desire and what we need and who we are. And it has us opening up the door in a very real way. What I love here is that he has the boar 
riding beside him, running beside him. And this story, which I, I can't pronounce the Welsh, to be honest, and I, I forget the names of the people, but he's on a quest to marry this, the most brilliant woman in, in all, all of Wales, right? And this boar has a pair of scissors on his head that the, the guy's father, the, you know, well, the woman's father told this guy that he has to get, you know, you have to get this, this pair of scissors or else you can't marry my daughter. He gave him unbelievably hard quests to do. I think it was Etain, to marry Etain. And this is, this is a partnership that shouldn't have happened. He should have been killed instantaneously. And yet now they're working together. And so we're going to find a strength in our hearts where this was supposed to break us. Like this was supposed to bring us down. This was supposed to stop us. And now all of a sudden, we're starting to see ourselves move forward, we move forward in connection, move forward in what we desire, move forward in who we are. And as we have that connection, as we have that openness of soul and of self, it's like, oh, is this what I'm capable of? And it brings us to the Ten of Pentacles. It brings us to a place of wealth. It brings us to a place of sharing of prosperity. It brings us to a place of also knowing what we desire. This is wealth or what we want as much as money in our lives, what we value as much as money in our lives. We're starting to see. We're starting to say, oh, this is what I'm working for. Oh, this is what I desire. Oh, this is what I need. This is me. And as we're finding ourselves, we're finding our voice, we're finding what we desire, we're finding our way to move forward, it brings us to, you know, we talk about generational curses. It brings us to a place of generational blessings. It brings us to a place of beauty, of blessing, of insight, of of understanding. And even if it's just a small spark, even if our families don't have, you know, blessings abounding around them, there could be this small spark that comes forward and it comes forward and we can feel it in our bones, in our, in our very DNA, in our cellular memory. And it brings us to the King of Wands. It brings us to honor and standards and wisdom and motivation. And again, honor and standards and wisdom and motivation. It flows around us like a mantra. It's like, this is what I honor within my life. These are the standards that I hold myself to. This is the motivation that I have to move forward in the life that I desire for myself in the world that I need to be in. We're starting to see our fire, our instincts, our passion lead us forward. And as we're doing this, we're seeing us more and more and more. We're going to have this little bird on our shoulder, this little insight, these little ideas coming in. This is also a great time to work to music or to listen to music. And I would say more classical music or something more instrumental based, something more soothing. So not like, you know, death metal or anything like that. But if that soothes you, go for it. What we're going to see here is just the sense of this instinct is moving me forward to my passion, to my fire, to what I desire, and I'm seeing myself transform. And we're also seeing ourselves transform because of the strength that we have in our hearts for ourselves. Now, the five of pentacles here says struggle and hardship and loss and struggle and hardship and loss. It's like, I'm never going to be able to reclaim what I have lost, what has fallen away, what is overwhelming for me. And that's going to be a very, that's a very powerful mantra to have in our heads. Like, I can't get back what I once loved. And yes, we'll never have the past back exactly the way that we wanted it to be. But this is very much an energy of, I get to have my world. I do. I'm just doubting it right now. And what we think about is what we attract. So if it's doubt, and if it's fear, and if it's chaos, and if it's hurt, that's what we'll get from our world. This is saying the past, it's over, it's done. It might have ripped out our hearts. It might have devastated us in ways that we never expected. Does it get to rule us? Absolutely not. This is us finding our power. This is us finding ourselves. This is us looking and saying, I can be lost for the rest of my life. Or I can embrace me. I can embrace what I need, what I love, and what I want for myself. And that's going to be a very beautiful thing. Let us see our lunar energy. Oh, goodness. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So at our root, 
We have communication is is key. The new moon in Gemini right here. Communication is key to pleasure, to the pleasure that we want to have in our lives, to what we deeply desire for our lives, from ourselves, the way that we can move forward in a pleasure of being. The, the communication is key. Communication is key. To say to ourselves, this is what I want. To say to the world, this is what I want. To find our strengths, to see ourselves. It moves us to our lunar inner self. And it says surrender to the divine, the new moon. The, not the new moon, the full moon, trust. The full moon is intrinsically powerful for us. It tells us surrender to the divine, surrender, embrace, release, live in the moments, not in the fear of the future, not in the chaos of the past. And it's not saying don't plan for the future, but it's saying don't let the future become our obsession. Trust, trust that we are being taken care of. Trust that we are being nurtured. It moves us then to our lunar emotional self, and this is the full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. Surrender. Surrender to the deeper, you know, power of this moon, to divinity that is around us, to the God's head within us. You know, surrender to the power of, of us. It's not saying that I am, you know, all powerful, all seeing, but it's surrendering to the force greater than us that lives within us, that moves us, that guides us. Surrender and do not let your pride get in your way because your ego can take over and say, oh, well, this is how it's supposed to be. And that's how it's supposed to be. And if it's just not like this, and if it's just not like that, then it can never be. And we, we will find ourselves walking away from things that we were absolutely supposed to welcome in. Our lunar public arena self is the full moon in Virgo. You are good enough. Focus. Focus on that transformation. You are good enough. Focus on that beauty. We have only one aspect, you know, one new moon here at our root, which says communication is key. And so quieting ourselves and going into that communication is going to be key. The rest are all full moons. And it's the full moon essence of itself coming forward. So this full moon is going to be so powerful. Make sure it doesn't sweep you away. Okay. Our subconscious Luna message is hold your vision and release Release all the chaos that will not let you move forward in blessings, in instincts, and in ideas. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the King of Pentacles. We're going to see everything as interconnected. All things are in interconnected, so that's not going to be a bad thing. But it's going to be if it doesn't have this monetary value, if it doesn't move me forward in this way, then it's not good. And what Spirit is saying here is that you will be surprised at the inherent worth of things if you stop worrying about the price tag of it. Our subconscious chakra energy is communication, the third chakra. We need to talk. We need to talk to ourselves, to the world around us, to what we desire, to what we want, to what we need. We need to communicate. And that communication is going to be powerful and beautiful. Our subconscious rooted self is the lovers. Gemini energy, which is beautiful because we have that new moon in Gemini coming here. So it's beautiful Gemini energy, which is all about Merc Mercury. It's all about communication. And here it's saying fall in love with life again. Embrace your passion. Have the masculine and feminine aspects of ourselves move us forward and see where our angels bind us and take us and what is presented to us. It moves us to our subconscious inner self and that is the Ace of Cups. Oh, goodness. That is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift just for us. And this gift transforms us. It heals us. But this is a gift because we are water sign energy. We're represented by the cups in the minor arcana, by the moon in the major arcana. We're going to see that it brings us to what we love, to what we desire, to what we need, to what's, you know, powerfully and beautifully important to us. It's also healing away and helping us release so much negative, toxic energy. It moves us to our subconscious emotional self, and that is the star Aquarius energy. So we have Aquarius within our chart, or we're born on the cusp with Aquarius. This is going to be a time where our dreams start coming forward. This is going to be a time where we start to release, where we start to gain an understanding, where we start to see ourselves more and more, and what it is that we deeply want. This is the wish, not the cross your fingers type of wish, but a deep and powerful and potent wish of the soul, wish of the self wish that divinity hears. It moves us to our subconscious public arena self. And that is the two of swords. Here it says choice, decision. And it's just repeated around and around. Choice, decision, choice, decision. I always thought there would be two ways forward. 
which way do I take? And what we're going to find is that roads are opening to us that we never thought would be opening. Ways to move forward are coming that we never thought would be a part of our world. Do not be stuck to one or the other. It is time to open up our mind and let, and let power come in and let new roads come forward. All right. All right, Pisces. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and, and stay safe. So let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, the intensity, and the brilliance that is this time, this moon, and ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces, and may you have a blessed moon.